Hello, good afternoon or good day, my dear students in grade 8, specifically in research 2 subject. In today's video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the rules and ethical guidelines in conducting scientific research. Okay, last time we had our video, we were on uh, video discussion, we were on the the coverage for the research process. So this is part of the coverage. Yeah. So let's start without further ado. And by the way, I have already uh, forwarded the reference for this uh, presentation. Just check your GCs. Uh, that is Intel. I I mean uh, Regeneron ICEF 2021 rules and guidelines. Okay. So let's start. So our objectives for today's uh, lesson, video lesson, is number one, discuss what is meant by and why there should be ethical standards in scientific research. And number two, explain the rules and guidelines in conducting scientific research. If you want to add objectives, you cannot add because I am doing the video lesson, so just <laughs> listen. Let's continue. So let's start with this uh, quotation from Jeff Cooper, from Albany Medical Center, Ethical Decision Making, 2001, page 1. Ethics is the disciplined study or morality and morality ask the question what should one's behavior be okay so any idea about the the say the quotation or the quote no that's correct so whatever your idea i think that's correct no, i i i'm no i cannot hold your idea no. so uh as a re research student or a f as a junior high school researcher so what should be your behavior towards doing scientific investigations okay so when you say behavior there, what should be your uh, actions, proper actions towards conducting scientific investigations? Next. So, these are your guiding questions in doing your scientific research in the future or maybe in our uh, in formulating research title because that's our target by the end of the school year how should I behave as a researcher and what character traits should I cultivate okay so we have a mem here Memi. one does not simply start the project without considering ethics That should be uh, the first uh, consideration before, even before formulating your research title. So your research title or maybe your problem, research problem, should be, uh, should follow uh, the ethical standards of doing scientific research. Next ethics in research so what, I what is what is uh, ethics in research in doing research involves the application of fundamental ethical principles to planning that's uh, while doing your uh, by formulating your research problem your procedures your research proposal your research plans conducting the actual uh, conduct of your scientific investigation and publishing of research so after having the uh, your research project done 
of course you need to publish it or you need to submit it to your teacher or to other journal or other publications so there are also things to consider now uh, when when does the the ob observance of uh, ethics in doing research began no so let's have the brief history it started with uh, this uh, Nuremberg Code 1947. Okay, this is during World War II. No? In the Nuremberg, Nuremberg Code 1947, uh, th these are set of 10 guidelines for ethical treatment of human participants in research. Okay, this is out of the, this is created out of their experiences during World War II, wherein the Nazi medical uh, experiments conducted on uh, their uh, POW or uh, prisoners of war, no, by the doctors of uh, Nazi doctors. So uh, during the experiment, they have they conducted the in inhumane. Uh, practices towards uh, the human participants which, which are the prisoners so they, se they set this Nuremberg code so that it will not be repeated again the malpractices of the human participants next Belmont report so I think uh, uh, maybe after 15 to 20 years after the Nuremberg code the Belmont Report was created. This is again uh, based from the Nuremberg Code. This Belmont Report is an ethical principles and guidelines for the protection uh, of human subjects of research. Okay, this is an updated, uh, updated ethical standards uh, fr from from the original Nuremberg. Nuremberg Code of 1947. What is the feature of the Belmont Report? So there are three features for the Belmont Report. We have uh, respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. So uh, let's discuss this thoroughly oh, oh, as we go along in our topic. So uh, let's just uh, s have a, a free view of the what is uh, all about. Respect for persons is a uh, uh, you as a researcher of uh, human which which has uh, human participants. Uh, one one way of observing respect for per person is that uh, you keep their identity. Okay, you know, data privacy cap, for example. Beneficence is a is uh, is about uh, the purpose of research is of greater good over the over the use of uh, human participants. So the purpose is for the greater good. That's why you have to use a human for the subject. It's like that. Justice that the participants are treated accordingly to uh, principles and guidelines for uh, human. Participants, so no no mal maltreatment to human subjects. Those are just few example of the three features. Next, how to avoid ethical dilemmas in doing it? See, when I say ethical dilemmas, is that uh, in uh, formulating your question or doing the research, you will come to a point that uh, you do not know if. What you are doing is wrong or right, or does it follow the guidelines or not? So how to avoid that? No? First, number one, you know the rules. Okay, master the rules. Once you know the rules, for example, what we are following, the rules that we follow is the rules uh, set by uh, ICEF or the uh, International Science and Engineering Fair. So we need to read the ISEF guidelines and align our problem uh, problem for in your case later on in research 9 and 10 your research as a whole no? 
to the ISAF, uh, Intel ISAF guideline or now it's, it is called Regeneron ISAF guidelines. Number two, uh, is, these are the guide questions for you to regarding this number one uh, step to avoid ethical dilemma. How are researchers supposed to behave? Yan. Okay. So again, you behave according to the rules set. Whatever rules that we follow. In depth, and we follow the ISAF rules. And who, who says so? Who says so? So this is, uh, again, who's, who, what we follow is Intel ISAF. So according to Intel ISAF, so. ISAF says so that you do this, do that. So that's how we're going to follow. No? Number two, know your rights and responsibilities. Okay. For example, uh, what is your right as a student researcher? At the same time, what is your responsibility as a student researcher, junior high school student researcher? Okay. In terms of authorship, of course, you, if you are the researcher, you're the author. And what if you, uh, if you have a member that is only uh, contributing financially, can he be an author or a co-author, or let's just put him in the uh, her or her in the acknowledgement? Okay, so those are the things that uh, you need to know. No, so uh, by practice, if there are members like that, that that does not really involve in writing the paper and doing the do, doing the actual conduct of the experiment you put him in the acknowledgement but not as authorship or co-author your is it the the advisor will serve as your co-author so uh, those are set by the uh, set by the school or by the scientific review committee and the school uh, a, uh, school science investigatory project uh, team no? depending on the agreement to the student researcher and the advisor okay next I'll remove my camera number three learn to recognize the most common ethical mistakes okay Usually, the most common one, we tend to forget that, no? but uh, that's very important. For example, misappropriation of text or ideas. Okay, so the idea that uh, your research, that you get uh, your research from should be credited like that. Should be reference. Deceptive reporting of research results, so you manipulate the results, no? We, we have uh, false positive, false negative, things like that. Number four. Take steps now to avoid conflicts in your research group. Okay, so that's why you have to set that uh, this will be our agreement as to the authorship and who, who will be considered as author and uh, in deciding your research problem research title you should also consider there um, as early as possible the ethics behind the formulation of research so that later on uh, there are uh, there will be a uh, minimal discomfort in doing the research because it, it's already taken up taken care of previously or earlier part of your research because if not if you will wait for the the result or of the actual experiment it is expensive and it takes a lot of effort to go back to the first step in doing the research because you don't you did not take care of any ethical standards or ethical for part of your uh, research next some areas of research ethics okay this is uh these are just uh, the areas that is common to you as a 
student researcher. No? First, we have research misconduct. This is very common to junior high school research researchers like you know, falsification, fabrication, and plagiarism. Okay, so falsification is that. Uh, so, for example, you have uh, you have forged the uh, say signatures of your advisors to to uh, dyan, to hasten the process, no? Kasi mm, magpunta pa kay sa advisor, magpapirma, oh, why not i, i forge nyo na lang, no? Mga ganyan, no? So, that is wrong. Fabrication. So, this is during the collect collection of data after doing the experiment. So, for example, uh, you measure your the actual result in terms of centimeters. The, the actual measure is 10 centimeters. Then, you add 5 to make it... Uh, uh, make it 15 centimeters for uh, better results that's fabrication of data or so experiment plagiarism of course uh, copying one's idea that is not your own and without referencing yours or sources sources or uh, without even uh, properly referencing your one is considered plagiarism next number two collaboration issues so again, we have this who will be the authors. You should set that one. Data ownership and management will be your authors, co-author, and say things like that. Now, so for example, you have a classmate belongs that belongs to your group, as mentioned earlier, but he is not uh, actually contributing to the actual write-ups and conduct of the experiment. So, is he considered an author or co-author? Uh, defi definitely not. No. Even if it is, uh, even if he or she b is in your group, because no. the actual authors are the has the uh, first-hand experience in doing the research, like write-ups and experiments. Number three animal subject research so uh, if you have animal as a sample uh, so uh, what kind of animal is accepted in uh, doing experimental research so according to the intel I just a highlight but anyway I will discuss this later on in details so are we allowed to use cats as our sample animal sample no? So, according to Intel, uh, invertebrates are, are not allowed to use unless uh, there's no other substitute for your research and a uh, proper, proper uh, issuances or forms are being cared of into, uh, say for example, in compliance with the IACUC or the International Animal and Animal Care and IACUC, International Animal Care unit okay so we will discuss later anyway and number four human subject research so if you have human participants like doing uh, gadgets innovations robotics and intelligent machines and uh, you want to test the usability of your gadget of your in the physical science no category of course the one that will use that is uh, your classmate maybe as your respondents or any other human participant there are uh, protocols to follow like uh, not uh, revealing their identity for example and of course uh, forms to fill up and to comply okay next intel intel isa forms no? number one so research misconduct we have here Fabrication ma means making up data. Na I've mentioned that already. No, falsification means manipulating research materials, equipment, processes, and uh, changing or omitting data. I've mentioned that already. Also, 
plagiarism means appropriation of another person's ideas process without giving appropriate credit so yun proper citations things like that or uh, referencing those are fabric fabrication falsification plagiarism for example we have here uh, misconduct image manipulation so you have here uh, randomly assigned to a group A or B but uh, look at that is that randomly assigned no the A's are much bigger and than the B's no In terms of samples data fabrication mention mentioned already omission and suppression yeah we have discussed that plagiarism for the work from the work of another okay I've discussed that already yes. next collaboration collaboration issues so we have a uh, mems here no you're right if you work together there's no stopping us yeah. so again what will be considered as an author is the one that is directly involved in the write-ups and the actual experimentations co-authorship may be your advisor or your research advisor or depending uh, on uh, what is set by the institution you are in so for example what is set by Tagum City National High School Science Investigative Project Team so de depending on the agreement acknowledgement those who contributed to your study but uh, not actually involved in the write-ups in the in, in the experimentations like your group member that contributes only financially to your team so mm, credit him as an not as an author but uh, on, on the acknowledgement okay hmm. and any other person involved in uh, that uh, somehow contributed to your research for example your parents who who, uh, who are your adult supervisor your research teacher who your advisor and those who lend hand again that is not part of the actual write-ups and conduct so in uh, include them in the acknowledgement it does not count but it's a sign of respect okay co-authorship I mentioned that already number three animal subject research so there are three R's principle to observe in animal research number one refine when you say refine refining experiments to cause less pain and distress so, so as much as possible you design your uh, procedures that will uh, cause minimal or as much as possible no pain to or distress to your samples or animal subject reduce okay reducing the number of animals used in pa if possible so again you reduce the sample for example uh, which are still statis statistically representative of the population no? say for example uh, uh, you, you intend to use 12 lab rats but uh, statistically you four will will be enough so why not four instead of 12 no? next replacement yeah replace higher order th higher order animals with lower order ones so I mentioned this one in our previous uh, discussion I think so uh, webinars that uh, uh, instead of vertebrate animals why not why not use uh, lower living forms of animals which are comparable in terms of the uh, development and uh, say pra uh, physiological and physiological processes to that of the invertebrate the invertebrate that you are as your animal subject for example instead of rats w why not use uh, say zeb zebra fish if it is uh, comparable in terms of uh, as mentioned development and physiological processes 
Kumbaga, whatever the finding that you will have in uh, using rats, uh, if if we can still the same can still have it, the same findings and results while well, using ze zebra fishes, why not use zebra fishes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Serious. Uh, seriousness. Uh. Okay, next, uh, I'll remove my video. Next is, uh, no, next, uh, human subject research. Yan. In doing human subject research, uh, unahin natin itong MEM. MEMS ba? Ano si tawag? MEMI? MEMS. IRBs means uh, Interna I I uh, Institutional Review Board. So, this is the, this is the phase of the inter IRBs wh when they see another research applying human testing. Okay? So, it means that uh, uh, another human testing again because uh, human uh, research which involves human testing especially in life sciences or when, uh, when the testing when human subjects are, are are to be introduced with uh, in an extra or medicine like that it's very uh, the the process of having a human subject is very complicated there are things that we, we have to follow and that's the task of the institutional review board to review those procedures if it is being followed carefully but if not it your research will not uh, will not be approved if you don't uh, follow those tedious uh, process of having human subject and we have to consider this one of course this is from the Belmont report respect for persons again for example individual autonomy of the protection of individuals yeah ibig sabihin na halimbawa common is uh, we do not reveal the identity of the human subject. Beneficence mentioned already. Maximize benefits over harm to human subject. Justice, of course. Equitable distribution of research risk and benefits. Now, for example, mm, you, se you have selected uh, human subject are only, uh, uh, you are being racist, for example. No? You only selected white people as your human subject so we say if we're going to exercise justice there you include ac uh, across the races no hmm. that's justice okay so we have here an activity let's try to find out that you know the answer based from our um, initial discussions Identify ethical issues in the following scenarios. So I'll give a scenario and then you answer if it's uh, ethical or not ethical and why and why. Okay. So number one, two gra graduate students or say graduate students, is, this is uh, say junior high school uh, going to senior high, have made some measurements on a new material. The data points are as shown. To prove their hypothesis, the results should lie on the curve shown. So we have here a graph. This is the curve here. The two students considered omitting the two, dat the two data points. We have two data points here, which were off the theoretical curve. Okay? Ito, i-omit daw nila, no? Mga outliers ang tawag natin dyan. So, what say you, no? What do you think? Ethical or unethical? And why? Okay. Answer? Correct, no? So, it is unethical as it would amount to falsification of documents because you emit the data no? should include outliers in two data there that are extremely 
beyond the g curve, like the graph, and give probable reasons or find out statistically acceptable ways of trimming outliers. Okay, you can include the outliers, but you use uh, median, for example, para ma ma get get rid of the outliers. Now, that's how you treat treat data with outliers, no? But still, you have to include include. Okay, next number two. So this is the uh, number two question. I'll read. Students are required to prepare a research proposal during their junior high school program so maybe let's have this uh, uh, later later part of our grade 8 research 2 no? let's have a research proposal or maybe a research problem Juan developed the idea for his project and discussed with a friend several months later he found that his idea had been submitted as a research proposal by his friend without his knowledge. Okay, the question, ethical or unethical and why? Okay, answer, correct. The answer is unethical as failure to, to give credit to the person whose idea it is so according to intellectual property and it amounts to plagiarism okay so what should have been done should discuss and include as co-author so pwede i-co-author mo na lang siya next number three Three friends decide to work together on a research project during the vacation. One of them went abroad during the vacation and did not contribute to the research. The friends include all three names three ito no, in a presentation made at a scientific congress. Ethical or unethical? So, ang isa ka friend ay nagpunta ng nag-vacation. Yung dalawa lang nagawa. Then, sa Congress, tatlo sila nag-present. No? Answer? You are correct. Unethical. As only those who contributed intellectually should be cited as authors. Those who contribute in other ways may be cited in the acknowledgement or maybe acknowledge no? well, financially so acknowledge more that the uh, financial support no? but not as authors as author no? okay next number four a group of undergraduate students planned a research project on the detection of fetal abnormalities in the second trimester by ultrasound scanning. They collected data from the scan room without informing the mothers. So, ethical or unethical and why? Answer? You are correct. No? Unethical. So, as informed consent was not taken okay what should be done is that should have informed mothers of their intent even though there is no particular advantage or disadvantage to the mother in doing so so kailangan lang na uh, uh, say written consent or uh, consent from the mothers okay next so so let's stop here in our next video, we will discuss Regeneron ISEF International Science and Engineering Fair Rules and Guidelines. Okay. Before, it is called Intel ISEF because the, their, their, they had uh, the ISEF have, uh, their partner had their partnership with Intel, but now it's uh, their partnership is with Regeneron, which is a uh, 
which is a pharmaceutical company, so naging Regeneron ISEF. But uh, just, just a little update, uh, minor updates on the 2020 ISEF rules and guidelines to 2021 ISEF rules and guidelines. So, but uh, we will discuss this in the next video. So, should there be questions, clarifications, just comment in our GCs or PME personally. And after viewing this video, please proceed to the LMS to answer uh, our quiz regarding this video. That's it. So, see you in the next video. Goodbye, class.